All right, so today Mike Seatown, Richo and myself sat down to talk about our favourite records of 2018. There's tons and tons of bands in this list. We tried to mix it up a little bit so it wouldn't just be all the basic bands that you see on everyone else's lists. We did have many different bands we wanted to talk about, but there was three different people in this video with many different opinions and we tried to get through it as quick as possible. Saying that, it did take an hour and 36 minutes, so I don't know how I'm going to edit this. I just want to say a massive thank you to Mike Seatown and to Rich for taking time out to do this video of me, even though they've got other stuff uh, planned for their day. It's, um, it's a really nice thing to get together with other people and do videos like this. I definitely want to do it in the future, tons more to come and is that it? That's it. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to let the video play. It jumps straight in. So add Mike Seatown and add Richo. All right, I'm going to go have a cup of tea. See you in a bit. Bye. Cool. So the first record we're going to talk about is City Hunter, Deep Blood. Obviously linked in with Civilized, Culture Shock, Cadaver Dog, all of those youth attack bands. I only heard like a little bit. I didn't. I didn't feel enough to like really listen to the whole album. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was talking about this band a few years ago. I thought they were really cool because they're kind of one of those blackened punk bands. They are very few bands that I think can actually do that well. The thing is, I had kind of forgotten about them and I didn't know that this record was coming out and I just randomly heard it. I think it's killer. It's really cool hardcore, but it's definitely got a black metal edge to it without being cheesy. Like it's super good. I think it is kind of cool, the whole thing that Youth Attack's got going with the black and punk thing, like Mike said, and watching live videos of them as well. They have this like crazy live presence where the singer wears some sort of, is it leather? I'm not sure what it is, like weird black mask. It's like a gimp mask or something. I don't know what it is. I'm guessing this is a theme that singer is some sort of murderer or something. He comes on stage with this huge, massive knife and a head inside a plastic bag covered in blood. <laughs> I've never seen that. That's that's f stupid. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, I think this record was pretty solid for like an album. Like I said, you can listen to it the whole way through. I, there's, there's like a few bands like off there, but like I find it really easy to like. They sound so similar. So many of the bands on that label. Mm -hmm. Like I like Vile Gash, but like yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's hard to keep up sometimes with Youth Attack, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of output. Well, you can talk about the next record because you put it on the list. This is Death Heaven, Ordinary <laughs> Corrupt Moral Love. <laughs> I thought it was way better than the last album. Way better. There was a lot, a lot more defining moments on it. They sorted out that guitar tone as well. With the guitar tone on the last album, it was like they were trying to be slipped not. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you not find that? I, I didn't put those two and two together, but now you said that, I'm going to go back and listen to it. Yeah, with like the distorted, like distorted bits, it, I, yeah, it just didn't feel like Death Heaven to me. But like this new album, it's, it's brilliant. It's definitely an improvement. The boys did it again. <laughs> I agree with everything that Rich said. It's so much better than the last record. The last record to me sounded like they were kind of being tryhards a little bit. Like they were trying to be aggressive. They're trying to be heavy because everyone was calling them pussies or whatever. And then with this record, it seemed like they said, it, we're going to go back to doing what we do well. And they nailed it. I really just haven't listened to this record. Not one thing. So oh, wow. I'm going to have to definitely go back into it. Canary Yellow is such a good track. It was, I think they released it as a single as well, leading up to the album release. It's, mm -hmm. it's one of the best songs on the album. So the next record we got is by Ghost or Ghost BC, as they're known. What, what's the name? Prequel? Prequel. I've never heard anyone say it out loud, so... No matter what, everyone's going to be like, giving me shit in the comments, but <laughs> well, let's just go with the, the new Ghost record. Um, <laughs> It's their fifth album release. If anyone doesn't know Ghost, they probably know what they look like or maybe even seen their t-shirts or patches it shows. Ghost are like one of those bands that just came out of nowhere and exploded onto the scene and everyone just went mental for it. I was lucky enough with my new job to actually have the album release party at work. So we got given the album, um, I think it was a month in advance and we invited many people along. They all came dressed up and we had like a huge artwork on the wall of the album cover. I gotta say like, I never gave this band as much time as they maybe deserve. And with this album really going in depth with it and having to learn about it, I can't give this album enough praise. Like it's something that I'm normally not into. And normally 
I would maybe even just push it off as something really cheesy, but if you take away all of the masks, if you take away all of the artwork and all that stuff, this album is pretty much flawless. There's not one bad song in it. Did you listen to it, Rich? No. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, Rich is like, no, mate, I did not listen to this record. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not in, I'm not a Ghost fan, to be honest. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's, it's a bit too much cheese for me. You're letting the team down, mate. I'm, I'm going to have to cancel this call. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to mute you the rest of the call. What did you think of it, Mike? I f love it, man. I think it's, it's just definitely extremely cheesy. But I think that's kind of the point. I mean, it's just a really good heavy metal record. I know people don't like people to say that it's metal. It's not extreme metal. It's not, you know, death metal or anything. But it's a really well-written heavy metal record. And it's just enjoyable. It's poppy. It's catchy. It's got good riffs. It's got great vocal melodies. It's a fun record. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they got this, like, huge King Diamond vibe to it. And obviously, like, coming from... It's from Sweden, right, this band? I don't know, actually. Yeah, I think they are. Yeah. So, obviously, they've got, like, a massive inspiration coming from King Diamond and uh, imagery and all that stuff. And with the whole smoke and mirrors thing of wearing masks, I guess they got really big. But it's definitely a decent album. I was into it, but I can understand why people aren't. I'm sure I saw rumours or saw something on the internet about, like, aren't some of the members, or at least one of the members, was he in, like, Repugnant? Yep. The, the main guy was in Repugnant, and he was also in, like, some indie rock bands, apparently. I didn't so, know that. He's a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty interesting dude. Yeah, I love Repugnant. Like, if we were talking about Repugnant, I have, like, a lot more input. <laughs> it's the, it, uh, from what I understand, it's the, the singer, the papa, whatever the f the singer is the same guy that is the main dude in Repugnant, the guitar player slash singer in Repugnant. I've never verified it, but that's what I was told. Yeah, that's, that's the whole Smoke and Mirrors thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I quite like the idea of that, though. Like, maybe they were in, like, some sort of abstract pop band or metal band, and then they've just decided, like, right, let's make some money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that <laughs> that's going to Dave Grohl playing in our band. Yeah, I heard that Dave Grohl was in ghost but like I maybe, did too. yeah maybe that was just like some pushed around rumor to get people to read their articles probably um mm -hmm. the next record is the weekend my dear melancholy i i love this ep i was kind of unsure about where he was going to take his sound after his last album but it's interesting to see that he went away from the pop sounds and went back to like the really abstract r&b that he was doing before it's a dark record it's a sad record but i really like it i didn't hear it i'm not a weekend fan <laughs> <laughs> damn it i don't like anything apparently not <laughs> I had, I had one favorite album this year. Do you have any earphones, Rich? Because I think I can hear a little bit of echo in the background. Yeah, let me go. I'm fine, son. God, this guy. I thought I, I thought I was crazy. I was hearing something, but I figured it was just me because no one else was making a face. <laughs> so. All right. I'm sorry, guys. He sh should be. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really listen to The Weeknd that much, but I definitely fully got into Starboy. I'm not sure why I didn't get into the earlier stuff. Maybe because it was like, one of those records that was on like repeatedly at work obviously like working in uh, customer service and stuff like that you hear a lot of the, the the bigger albums that are coming out that year and starboy was in huge rotation but i did actually see a live version of starboy i'm not sure what it was on i think it was maybe like a jimmy kimmel or something like that and i was just blown away by the vocal technique and how good he can sing on the record it definitely has its like michael jackson moments but like looking at him do it live I just got this massive like Michael Jackson vibe from it. And with this record, listening to this real like defining certain moments of it, which are pure, like absolute Michael Jackson worship. And I love that. I, I really love the way you can make like this really awesome vibe of Michael Jackson, but making it nice and dark. And like mm -hmm. you said, a little bit like slower, a little bit more moody. And this just had a super good vibe to it. Next record, I'm going to leave up to Rich. I have heard this too, but I know Rich has got a lot to say about this record. This is Idols, and the record is called... Is it just called Joy, or is it called Joy as an Act of Resistance? Yeah, yeah, it's Joy as an Act of Resistance. Cool, yeah. I'm going to let you go ahead and talk about it. 
Okay, this is my favorite album of the year. Finally, he's got something to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is on my number one spot on my list. Just like backstory, when I got into Idols, it was through the last album, uh, Brutalism. And I was just like, this is f- crazy. Like, this band is so catchy, aggressive, in a lane of their own. Like completely. When the singles came out prior uh, to Joy, I was just like, oh man, they've just like wafted it down, absolutely wafted it down. And I wasn't excited for the album at all. I was like, oh, we just like a one hit album. Then after a few listens of a new album, I think I love it more than Brutalism. And I love Brutalism. Just in general, not even the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Concrete. <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics on this thing as well are so f- funny when he starts singing the sermon like uh, your granddad's dead lovely spread like oh, yeah yeah the lyrics are super good to this super catchy i mean he's still aggressive with his sound but like the lyrics have changed into like more positive support thing like with chucks like samaritan so like looking at mental health especially with men i also love never fight a man with a perm like <laughs> the, the lyrics the lyrics that are so f- Funny. First time I ever heard about this band was when they played on Jules Holland. I think that was like their breakthrough thing for this album. When I've spoken to people about them, they all said that they saw them on Jules Holland. Uh, Jules Holland is a TV program in the UK where people play live um, in front of an audience. Always play live. There's never any like lip syncing or backing tracks. So it's it's definitely a good place to judge bands and. Jules Holland also had this later with Jules Holland where there would be heavier bands like Metallica and At The Drive-In, stuff like that. And the At The Drive-In was my favourite live performance of Jules Holland, but it's actually been, it's been taken over by idols because if anyone's seen it, the one-arm scissor by um, At The Drive-In or live on Jules Holland, they break like two guitars mm-hmm. They end up playing a tambourine. Everything's out of tune, but it's the most punk thing. Like the attitude wise, like not music wise, just attitude wise, it's the most punk thing you could ever see. I thought it was the most crazy live thing, but then idols come along and you have to remember that Jules Holland is like a very, even though it does have heavier bands, it's a very mainstream thing. Like it tends to have people that are in the charts, even though it does have people like idols. It tends to have people in the charts and it's very like middle class. And then someone like idols come on who are very much representing the working class. um, And they just everything up. And Jules Holland is sitting to the side. Jules Holland is a pianist, right? And a very, very well-renowned, well-respected person within the music industry. And he's sitting there on his piano, which he does throughout all the bands when they're playing. And the guitarist is just lying on top of the piano, just shredding like guitar behind his head and then like slamming the keys on the keyboard with his feet. It just absolutely blew me away. But at the same time, they managed to play the song pretty much perfectly. This whole record is super catchy. And like Rich said, the lyrics and everything are absolutely incredible. I know Rich told me to listen to it. And I want to say that I did go listen to a couple songs but I honestly do not remember a single thing. I don't remember if, I don't know if this is a punk band. I don't know if this is a hardcore band. This could be a polka band for all I know. I don't remember anything. So it sounds like I need to go back and check them out again. I definitely recommend it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a very, very solid album. Next on the list, we have Portal. Is this Iron or is it mm. Ion? Either I'm one. Sure. Either or. Either one. I'm going to let Mike take this one because I know he has some uh, things to say about this album. I love this album. I don't listen to a lot of death metal, but the death metal that I do tend to be attracted to is that super ugly, dirty, just disgusting sounding sh**. This record is so gross sounding. Like you put this on and you just feel like, ugh. Like it, it's just such a great album i can totally see why people would hate it though it is fairly monotonous it's not like you can really distinguish two songs from three other ones but if you're into that feeling and that sound in death metal that kind of dirty covenant incantation style of death metal then i think that you dig it but yeah i think it's killer i don't know if you two think this as well but do you think it's an album that fits within that genre of once you listen to it you feel the appreciation that you made your way all the all the way through do you have that with stuff like 
like the Purient record that came out a few years ago um, called uh, Frozen Niagara Falls. Mm. When you listen to the whole record all the way through, it does seem challenging for a lot of people if you're not very much into noise music. Um, I feel like the same thing with this record. Like I listen to it all the way through. I'm very much into it. I do like it. And I'm into a lot of heavy music, more on the extreme side. I just feel like this album is challenging and it's a good thing. Like it leaves you like thinking like, geez, like they really push the boundaries of how tinny a record can sound, how disgusting, just how like dark and horrible a record can sound. Yeah, it's just a thought that was running through my head. Like it definitely feels like you've accomplished something when you, <laughs> when you get through this record. Yeah, I thought it was good. It's sort of going on like what Mike said. It sort of is hard to like differentiate tracks sometimes. It, it didn't, it didn't, have like stand up moments that made me want to come back but i thought like the overall like, like sound and aggression of it was like really cool with like day death metal like this year it was more like in, about like infernal coil and like hissing i think it has a a big respect within the scene you know a lot of people are looking at it and um yeah hyping up a lot so that's a really nice thing to see within the scene that a record like this that's pushing the boundaries is respected and pushed around as much as it is what you just said there that's very true for like since this new Paul album like it's, i've seen that listed in publications i would never expect paul to be in so weird right god 